Mechanics 1, practice paper 3, question number 4. A box of weight 8 newtons lies on a rough. So before we go any further, let's highlight that word because it means to say friction. Think about friction. Box of weight 8 newtons lies on a rough plane that's inclined at an angle of 26 degrees to the horizontal. A horizontal force, so this is pushing horizontally, a P newtons acts upon the box. The box is in equilibrium on the point of slipping up the plane. So this force is not enough to move it, but another little bit, and it would move it. It's just about to move, so the force is actually holding it there, if you like. The normal reaction to the plane on the box is 14 newtons so let's see what we can add to our diagram let's do that last bit first I think the normal reaction which is something we usually have to work out the normal reaction we're actually told that that's 14 newtons so let's put that on our diagram um, let's put this 8 newtons on now so that is the force produced by the box vertically down that's 8 newtons now what else can we consider? It's being pushed by a force of P newtons. It's just about to move. What's stopping it move is the friction that's holding it there. So actually friction is acting down like that. I'm not just going to write the letter F for friction. I'm going to write the word. I'm also going to put the friction is mu R in brackets, I think. That's for me as much as for the examiner. What else can I consider? Well, I can consider this 8 newtons split into its components. Its component at right angles to the plane down there. How much of that 8 newtons is actually pushing down on the plane? And how much of that 8 newtons is pushing down the slope? So that can be split into those two components. So let's have a little look at that, shall we? Let's consider a right angled triangle. If that's 26 degrees, then that's 26 degrees. If that hypotenuse of that right angle triangle represents 8 newtons, then this side will represent the force pushing down directly onto the plane at right angles. And this will represent the force down the hill. Let's draw that a bit bigger. So this is going to rep represent 8 newtons, and this is going to be 26 degrees. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this is actually going to be 8 sine 26. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's the adjacent with respect to the angle, so that's actually going to be 8 newtons times the cosine of 26. So this is down. Now if you'd like, you can just remember all of this, rather than work it out every time. But I prefer to work it out. OK, now is that all the forces on the diagram? Because the first thing you should do in this sort of question is produce a diagram with the forces on it. I don't think so. This force of P Newtons. A certain amount of that will be actually trying to push the box up the slope. A certain amount of that will actually be pushing down on the plane. So we need to actually consider resolving this particular force. So let's see how we can do that. Well, let's consider a right angled triangle like this. Now if that's 26 degrees you can consider this as a corresponding angle, so that's 26 degrees. This um, is a hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. So let's draw that over here, I think. Steve. So that's representing P Newtons. And this is 26 degrees. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So therefore this force is actually P multiplied by the sine of 26. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore this force represents P cosine 26. So this is pushing down. So in fact I could write that over there as pushing down like that. So that's P sine 26. And this is pushing up the plane. So I could either indicate it there or I could actually indicate it up there. Which I think is more preferable. Now, I'm not saying that at this point you need to have all of that on a diagram to get the mark. Because this definitely is a situation where the examiner is going to give you a mark for showing a diagram with the forces represented on it. Now I've considered every possible thing on my diagram. I think the examiner might let you uh, get your mark for less than that. But anyway, that's my thinking. Maybe we better start answering the question now. You'll need to visit www.mathstutor.biz to see the rest of this question. Because if you visit www.mathstutor.biz you'll have the opportunity to buy this set of DVDs, there are three in here, along with this paper where you get question four so you'll be able to see the rest of the questions that are answered with what I've been doing so far. If you're interested in this set of DVDs, as I say there are three in the set, along with three papers, paper one, two and three, then pop along to my website www.mathstutor.biz and get your set. Look forward to hearing from you.